as we searched for heirs to the $670,000 Kondratuk estate, it became more and more clear that the family's Russian roots were the key. Funeral records confirmed that our family attended the Holy Trinity Russian Orthodox Cathedral in Chicago. So we arranged to meet with Father John to go through the church records. These are the old metrical records. Wow. You can see the Russian imperial seal. That's up over here. Mm -hmm. All hay dirt. And I believe that it's right over here, Kondratyuk. We were hoping that after looking at the marriage records and the baptism records, that we would be able to establish some type of blood relationship. Was there a best man? Those were the godparents. Mm -hmm. But no Andrew or any other contratuck was listed. It was a huge disappointment. Well, then let me ask you, how did... We asked Father John, are there any other contratucks? And he said no. Nothing else, nothing connected with Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. But Here. then he looked again. As a matter of fact, just as we are looking here and as my glasses are beginning to stop steaming, he found the counter deck. Father, you know did the you, game better uh, than we do. Send me one. Send me. So he's a so witness. He's a witness. I, I was flabbergasted because you have to understand, yeah, we were no, looking no, for no. Andrew. That's, that's, and that's out of the so blue, here comes Simeon Condratuck. Now, we had never heard of Simeon Condratuck for that very moment. And he was the best man at Lawrence and Anna's wedding. So Simeon Condratuck. You have to imagine he's got to be related. If not the brother, then he's blood. We knew locating documents from Anna and Lawrence's earlier life in Eastern Europe was our only hope of proving extended family relationships. It is my belief that the key to solving the Kondratuk case will be the archives in Gladno, where they all came from. <laughs> Before we left Holy Trinity, we hoped Father John could help us with one last nagging question. Sophie and Marie left an estate worth $670,000. But what caused them to die on the same day? As I'm looking a little bit closer, they have both August 1st of 98 as being the date of death and September 16th as being the date of burial. So. I'm not quite too sure what that means. Does that mean that they both died at home and were found several weeks later? Right. Um, we learned later that the women lived alone. A neighbor found them. One passed in her sleep, and the other died a week to ten days thereafter, never revealing that the other sister had previously passed away. So more likely than not, she died of a broken heart. It becomes a, a kind of obsession to find where the money goes because it's not this amount of money is sitting there. It's this amount of money that belonged to Marie and Sophie. So you want to find out who it goes to because it becomes personal. But personal or not, locating heirs is our business. We hoped our researchers overseas could help us wrap up the contract case quickly. In the meantime, David was in charge of generating new business for Air Hunters International in our home state of Louisiana. So we were headed there. You know, the new guy, and I just like to show the crew here that I can do it as well. I can take, you know, the case from the ground up. You know, I can sort out the family tree, find the heirs, knock on the door, sit down, sell them on the company, and get them to sign. I knew it was time to give David his chance at bat, but first we had to catch our flight to New Orleans. Here he comes. Come on, David! Let's go! Where are you? I went down to that little bookstore. Time is money, baby. <laughs> Time is money. Let's go. Come on. Our lifeblood are cases. We have to have cases, because if we don't have cases, we go nowhere. David was ready to work a case from beginning to end. Yeah, where you from? We're, We're right here, baby. New Orleans. Welcome back. It smells like home. <laughs> <laughs> So the Air Hunters International team went to Louisiana to dig up new cases. Today, we're meeting with Benny Spahn, the director of unclaimed property at the Louisiana State Treasury. Benny oversees the office responsible for returning lost funds to the rightful owners. They're great at what they do, but there is simply more work than their office can handle, and that's this where we means, come in. This is a list of everybody that we owe money to. It's got uh, approximately 700,000 names 
I guess it totals about 240 to 250 million dollars so, This is a gold mine for us. Mm -hmm. This is the beehive. This oh, yeah. is where our honey is. Here's a list of names that, uh, of people who we've been looking for mm -hmm. and uh, just have not been able to locate. Most of these people are in the New Orleans area. Mm -hmm. uh, One of the names on the list, uh, uh, Charles J. Welburn, looked especially interesting to us. There were two lost accounts worth roughly $20,000 total. We decided to begin there. Once we found the money and committed ourselves to working the case, we began the basic research. Step one was to determine if Charles Wellborn was living. We found him in the SSDI, Social Security Death Index. He passed away in 1979, so we knew we were looking for an heir to Wellborn's $20,000. His death record showed that he was a seaman, a merchant seaman. And if you know anything about New Orleans, it's the third largest port in the country, I think. So you have a lot of seafarers there. This was our first lead. We're um, going to the United States Coast Guard Station in New Orleans to see if we can get access to the maritime sailors' records. We think that we'll be able to get a list. And as we understand it, the Coast Guard keeps track of all that. John Wells explained that accessing that information would take some time. The, the thing that, that you or anyone else can do is, to, which you always do with the government, put in a Freedom of Information Act request, and um, whatever we can tell you, we will tell you. We would have to rely on our own resources to hunt down Wilburn's heir, so Shar got to work. I was looking for information at one of the online genealogical sites, and a link led me to their message boards. At this guy. He's looking for his father, Charles Wellborn. David, this uh, is what we have. Let me read, read this. It says, I was wondering if Charles J. Wellborn is part of your Wellborn family. And this is a... It was a stroke of luck. Someone had posted a message online looking for our Wellborn. Stephen Novak. There's an heir. That's a guy. And that's a big break for us. Stephen Novak. Sharp, run that's... his name. Where is Charles Wellborn and is from? Uh, uh, what well, was last known address? Where is from New Orleans? New Orleans. St. Charles Avenue. Okay. Char located a Stephen Novak living in the immediate area. We thought this would be a very good case for David to take the lead in. Well, maybe we should go and uh, knock on his door. This heir had no idea we were coming to see him, and David has a way of putting people at ease. I want you to take a lead on this Wellborn case. I want you to talk about Louisiana stuff. I will. Yeah, just let me get in there, talk to him, and I'll get him to sign. Oh, your first guy might be right down first the street. First going up. Getting lucky, David. Let's go, David. Let's go, buddy. Does anybody see an address? What is that? Where did Grand Ape just go? I think it's right in front of us. Yeah. Well, that might have been that might have been on a different street. Here's two, David. Oh, oh Dave. Yeah. Uh, Hansel and Gretel may live here. Yeah, you know, can you do it? Yeah, no, I can not. do it. Don't worry. Dave, Dave says, beware a dog. That's all right. Okay, baby, go get them. I've worked with dogs before. Hey, so I'm looking for Steve Novak. Uh, you got the wrong place, but the wrong time. He's living in New Orleans. I can give you his cell phone number. Oh, sure. That'd be great. Bingo. Got a cell phone number. He moved in once three years ago, and he's got a mother and sister that live in Baton Rouge. Stephen moved from this house on the hill some time ago, but fortunately, his new address was not far away. Close your eyes and focus. We're going to pull right up in the front row. Let's go do this thing. you knock in that door, they open that door. You just never know what you're going to run into. Mr. Novak? Uh-huh. Um, my name's David Hilbert. Uh-huh. I'm with a company called Air Hunters International out of Los Angeles. We're an asset recovery company. It's nice when you get in the door, but that's just the beginning of the hard work. You guys are running the show here because I'm just like flabbergasted. 